As an equity analyst at JP Morgan, I often faced this question, EBITDA or EBIT, which one tells the real story about company's performance? The answer isn't one size fits all. Hi, I'm Dheeraj Vaid, the co-founder of Wall Street Mojo, and in this video, I'll break down the differences, the strengths, and the trade-offs of these two matrices so that you could choose the right one for your analysis. Let's dive in. So the very first difference between EBIT and EBITDA is its meaning and interpretation. So when we talk about EBIT, EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes, right? And when we talk about EBITDA, it is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization, right? So what is the key difference? depreciation and amortization here, right? Now, intuitively, let's understand what EBIT essentially means. So EBIT is the company's ability to generate profits. So when you look at this sales, you know, sales is happening in the company and the associated costs are deducted and all the other operating expenses which are useful to generate sales are kind of deducted, right? So we arrive at EBIT that is somewhat related to operations of the business, the core business of the company. So it measures the operating profitability of the company, right? Now, it doesn't include two things. One, it doesn't include the effect of capital structure. What do we mean by that? Capital structure means debt and equity. So if the amount of debt is high, how much will be the interest, expense, etc.? So we are not including interest. And likewise, we are not including the tax implications. So EBIT is before interest and taxes, right? So when we talk about EBITDA, EBITDA is again a similar profitability measure like EBIT, but it also excludes the impact of capital expenditures, right? Because we are also excluding depreciation and amortization. So when we talk about EBITDA, there are three things which we are excluding. We are excluding the tax impact. We are also excluding the capital structure impact, that is the amount of debt and equity. And we are also excluding the impact of capital expenditure in the company, right? So higher the capital expenditure, higher will be the depreciation and amortization, right? So we are also excluding that number to arrive at EBITDA. So the second difference between EBIT and EBITDA is its calculations. So we will be using the bottom-up approach to find out EBIT and EBITDA. What do we mean by bottom-up approach? We'll start with basically the bottom of the income statement, that is the net income or the bottom line. Okay, so we'll start with that and we'll add back the items that we need. Okay, so for the formula of EVIT, it starts with net income and then we need to add back interest and taxes. So the formula is fairly simple. Net income plus interest plus taxes. So what exactly will that number be? That will be 1200 plus taxes is 500 in this case and we add back 1000 as well. So what do we get? We get 2700. So of course, you know, this number is already available with us here. But in some cases, you know, we'll find that in the income statement, you might not be given EBIT directly. So you might want to calculate using this bottom-up formula. For calculating EBITDA, we'll use the same formula, the bottom-up formula. So we'll start with net income and then we add back interest and taxes and we also add back depreciation and amortization. All right, so uh, let's do that, the calculations. So we'll start with net income. We add back taxes interest, depreciation and amortization. So what do we get? We get 3000 as the answer. So please note here that EBITDA formula is basically uh, can be represented as EBIT plus depreciation and amortization, right? Because if you look at this, right, EBIT is net income plus interest plus taxes, right? And EBITDA is net income plus interest plus taxes plus depreciation and amortization. So we can also write this as EBIT plus depreciation plus amortization. The third difference between EBIT and EBITDA is the ability to compare two companies within the same sector. So let's assume that these are there are two companies, company A and company B, both are in oil and gas sector and they have the same amount of sales incidentally and same net income and even the EBIT is also same. Now my question is, 
which company is doing better in terms of operating profitability as in in terms of core operations of the business which company is better now if you look at ebit it is same right so your answer would be exactly same but when we talk about ebitda ebitda essentially measures the profitability of the company after removing the impact of capital expenditure so if you look at this company b you'll find that okay company b has a higher amount of depreciation right so that means company b must have invested more in its assets and that's why their cost of goods sold is essentially less right so in terms of operating profitability intuitively company b might be doing better and we will find that out using ebitda so let's find out what the ebitda number is so in the first case ebitda is net income plus taxes plus interest plus depreciation and amortization right we did this formula so ebitda comes out to be 3000 but what about company b ebitda comes out to be 3600 so company b is doing a much better job so please note that i am not yet talking about you know how much the capital structure of the company looks like and you know all of that things i'm just saying that from core operating profit point of view company b looks to be much better as compared to company a another difference between ebit and ebitda is management's manipulation so if you look at ebitda it is lesser prone to management's manipulation of the financial statements compared to ebit and we'll explain this with the help of an example now let's take this company company a and company b let's assume both of them are in the same oil and gas sector and each one of them is a photocopy of each other like in terms of sales it's same cost is same depreciation amortization exactly every number is same and ebitda when we calculate ebitda it also comes out to be same that is $3000 all right now let's assume that both of them also follow a depreciation policy that is straight line depreciation policy okay now both of them have the same depreciation policy as well now let's assume that company b's management want to manipulate the income statement let us say that for some reason they want to report a lower net income so what they can do is you know they can change their depreciation policy instead of straight line depreciation policy if they follow a accelerated depreciation policy then what will happen the net income will be lowered down and this is how now what it happens in the straight line depreciation policy straight line means you know constant depreciation each year all right but when they follow a accelerated depreciation policy that would mean a higher depreciation in, in initial years and lower depreciation in later years right so let's say they changed it from straight line to accelerated now because of that your depreciation will change right higher depreciation in the initial years so let's assume that instead of 200 it is let's say 500 so what happens here your net income changes right it lowers down right so management has tweaked the financial statement by just changing the depreciation policy but now look at what happened to ebit and ebitda now ebit is 2700 for company a and for company b it is 2400 ideally there's no change technically from operating business point of view right but when you look at ebitda right what happens with ebitda ebitda hasn't changed at all right so this is the interpretation that we were looking for ebitda is lesser prone to management's manipulation another difference between ebit and ebitda is the industries or the sectors in which you know these tools are used now when we talk about ebit we say that it can be used in those sectors which do not have much of capital intensity that is capital expenditure is very less so think of services sectors or let's say you know tax firms consulting firms IT companies they do not require heavy machineries right as far as the investment goes so you can use ebit as a measure to compare these sectors or compare these companies now when we talk about ebitda we say that okay it should be used as a measure to compare companies which are highly capital intensive now think of uh, telecom sector or maybe manufacturing oil and gas and any other that requires heavy machineries heavy capital intensity okay so that's the main difference between ebit 
انا بدي 